The Washington Post published a much anticipated story this week about former CBS host Charlie Rose, specifically looking at what management knew about his inappropriate behavior toward women. This, as more women tell NBC executives that one-time star anchor Tom Brokaw harassed them too. Three CBS managers were warned. That's the headline on a Washington Post story that says 35 women have now come forward to say they were groped or harassed by one time this morning host Charlie Rose, leaving his former colleagues no choice but to report it again. I just want us to move forward. I want us to do the best job that we can. But that said, you can't ignore what these women are saying. We're not running away from it. No, but management is. Both CBS News president David Rhodes and 60 Minutes producer Jeff Fager say they knew nothing about Rose's behavior, even though employees say they made complaints as long ago as 1986. This comes the same week that new charges have been made against NBC anchor Tom Brokaw. There was something of a pattern of powerful men at NBC having relationships with more junior women. Last week, former morning anchor Linda Vester accused Brokaw of forcing himself on her. And at that point, he took the same hand, reached behind my head, and tried to force me to kiss him. Brokaw has called the allegations a character assassination and denies Vester's account. But the big question is, did NBC or CBS management know about harassment allegations involving some of their biggest stars? The Washington Post says they did and that more may be coming. And more has come even just now. Three women have filed a lawsuit against Charlie Rose. Some of his, One of his personal assistants has written a really, really damning first-person account of what it was like working for him, including some really, really lurid and sordid detail, which people will run to and find for themselves, but it's pretty bad. I should also say that we don't know yet whether this includes management at PBS. Keep in mind, Charlie Rose uh, owned his own program, so while he worked within the, the PBS corporate system, he really had his own operation. People reported to him, and it was sort of like the news hour. It was a separate entity, so whether people would have complained to PBS authorities, it's not clear. Probably not, which is why they haven't been mentioned. But as I've said consistently since this broke with Matt Lauer, um, Bill O'Reilly, a number of these people that, where it's been made public, of course management know. Of course they did. I mean, when I was first hired at ABC, it was well known, uh, including ma with, among managers, that uh, Peter Jennings was something of a philanderer. They told me about it. They, I needed to know because I was working very closely with him. So, of course they knew. And the fact that they're denying that they knew anything just, it's, it's, it stretches credulity to the point where I would just say it's a lie. Well, yeah, look, I think there are times in uh, when there's a, people are in a relationship and uh, let's say the husband is fooling around and everybody knew about what was going on and the wife didn't know anything. And I think sometimes in a network environment like this, you can have the reverse, right? Where everyone kind of knows a little bit of what's going on, but only a few people know a lot of the details that later come out and you start putting it together and it makes a whole lot of sense. That's not to excuse what has been taking place, because I think if you are in management and people bring you bits and pieces of information, then it is your duty to try to put that puzzle together or certainly investigate. The problem is, is that you're dealing with people who are responsible for bringing millions of dollars into your operation. Right. And they themselves make millions of dollars. They are the face of your organization. So while they would be very quick to fire someone who is making, you know, sort of entry level money and doesn't really have an, an image to uphold for the company, uh, it's very difficult to, for them to make the move uh, because it means a lot of money that may end up going out of the door. And I think that is the main issue that kept this undercover for so long. You've got, you know, we've had the first part of this reckoning, uh, the Me Too moment, um, where we've seen um, these stations hold the, the individuals accountable, and now I think you're, you're absolutely right to be focusing on this next mm -hmm. stage of it, which is um, what's going to prevent this from happening over and over again. In order to, to, to prevent that, you're going to have to see accountability at that management level. You're absolutely right. I mean, the, the, the standards have changed uh, uh, about what we understand to be um, acceptable um, now, now I think we have to go back and, and, and hold the, those managers accountable. I'm not sure what you would do in the case of CBS, where the, the current people obviously got rid of Charlie Rose, um, probably belatedly, probably not quick enough. Um, the question is going to be historically, how far do we start going back and, and talking about 
the management folks who were in place um, when these things were happening over the years, because these go back to, in, in the Charlie Rose case, back to the, the 80s. He's only been at CBS like 15 years or something? I'm not sure exactly, but... Mm -hmm. There's also the question of the, the depth of knowledge. I'm not saying this in any way yes. uh, in an attempt to be exculpatory here for management, but you can be sort of aware that something untoward is happening, and if you have personal loyalty to the person who's committing these acts, or if you have a, a vested interest financially in the person who's committing, or maybe a combination of the two, the human capacity for self-deception is pretty limitless. But they're saying you, you never can, heard anything. I can't never, right. never heard is, strikes yeah. me as right. a real stretch. Saying we didn't know right, what yeah. he was doing, I can imagine people sort of even semi-consciously choosing not to know because they didn't want to know the full details. and It was inconvenient for them to. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, that's the one, and again, I'm not saying that to defend people turning a blind eye, but I think sometimes it's almost uh, mm. something that people do instinctually. You know, they're, they're <coughs> dimly aware, but not much more, and they're totally okay with that. I would pick up with what you said, Adam, because I, I don't think any of these people did not know in the way that we're talking about it. But to be made aware in, this, in the legal sense, someone would have to file a formal complaint. And so they can correctly say, nobody filed a formal complaint. Mm -hmm. HR can say, nobody talked to us about this. That is for the record. Well, there were reasons why. And I believe Dan explained that. You know, mm -hmm. So here we are, and we understand the, the vicious circle, and we understand that uh, the money that these people are bringing in is too much for people to say. I'm going to go a step further and say, somebody even had a conversation with Charlie and said, come on, man, cut it out. You know, listen, with the words, get, you've got to put, rein it in, do something. I, I'll, I would put money on that, that somebody you think actually... think it probably happened with Matt Lauer, too? Yeah. Yeah, me too. I think that, all, I think that uh, you know, what I always argue for are the men who see it and would speak out loud about it, but I believe behind the scenes. I personally know some men and some, in some other cir circumstances who have said, stop doing that. I know that. So I know that that stuff happens. It just doesn't come to the forefront. I'm but, glad but, you mentioned that, Laura, because and it's I also want to mention Tom. But yes. M NBC has, I think, uh, an optics problem here yeah. because right. they seem to be rushing to mobilize to defend Brokaw. Yeah. They have the Matt Lowry issue. And remember, Ronan Farrow yes. apparently couldn't get his great big Harvey Weinstein right. expose right. published or uh, yeah. produced via NBC, so he had to go to The New Yorker. So I think CBS comes out of this looking a little bit better, at least at this point, than NBC, which is maybe damn with me. Well, they have, they, right. they've, the managers still say they didn't know. They just start naming names. That's it's going to have to happen, mm -hmm. you know. And the Washington Post seems to be on top of it, so we'll see.